Hello everyone and welcome back to the next episode of the War on Zero series. I'm recording this as a voiceover. Again, I had some audio problems. I'll fix that at some point, but uh, yeah, for example, in this scene, there's a lot of background fan noise from the War on 2 that was running at the time. And uh, there are other problems in this video as well, but I'll fix that at some point. But currently what I'm showing you is the deck, new deck panel and uh, mid panel I printed. And uh, yeah, you can see them. They don't look that great from the front. That's because of the bad PEI mostly. But I really like the look from the back. I really like how that hex design looks. I just wish I did the same for the front. Now, uh, at the time of this video, I was saying I wasn't going to reprint them. Then changed my mind and decided to reprint them. But and which is why I bought that new PI sheet on the V2. But then my War on 2 died, so yeah, I'm not reprinting them. This is the end of it. We can also see that I mounted the electronics everywhere, so they're all mounted. The blank spot here is for the PCB I designed in the last episode. And the blank spot here is for a temperature sensor that I will get to later. And I still don't have the tool head board on the tool head, but that will definitely be in this video. So uh, yeah, you can see that later in the video. But um, yeah, as I said, I moved the electronics. But uh, I did damage my Raspberry Pi during the move, so uh, if we zoom in, you can see that I knocked a SMD capacitor off there when I was unscrewing that nut. I was doing that with a pair of pliers, that probably was a problem there, but uh, yeah, it's gone. Now uh, that's a capacitor, so there is a good chance this will still work, plus it is near the audio connector there, which uh, gives me hope. but. Uh, yeah, if it doesn't work, then I'll have to replace that Raspberry Pi, but I'll definitely try. Since it's a capacitor again, it, there's a good chance of it working, so that's what I'm hoping for. I still have the cap, but I'm terrible at SMB soldering, so I'll only try that if it doesn't work. Now, uh, in the last episode, I also showed some beltware, but uh, yeah, it's still there, obviously, but I figured out what the problem was. I just didn't align that uh, pulley well, and uh, yeah, that was the problem. As for the color match of the uh, new filament, because I, as I said, I printed the deck panel and mid panel with the e sun filament, I mentioned that in the last episode, but the other panel was printed in Paramount. Uh, you can definitely see the color difference there, it's not a great match, but uh, at the same time, it's not that big of a difference. I think so uh, I'm keeping it because as I said importing uh, filament from America it's, uh, it's not worth it so uh, yeah I'll go with this and if I end up deciding that it doesn't look that well I can always just uh, print them in the new filament as well if I want to. So it has been a few weeks since what you just saw I just had to do some other projects first but I'm back to the V0. In between that time, the toolhead PCB arrived. So, as I talked about this before, you solder the umbilical to this T-shaped area, and you have connectors for the rest. And uh, you can see it in action here. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Assuming everything is wired correctly, it is a it is a pretty uh, useful PCB in my opinion. And I think I already released the Gerbers for this if I haven't. They will be now, so check the description if you're interested in getting these manufactured. But uh, from that, I'm running the umbilical to the back chamber as usual. Now in the back chamber, if you really want to, you can also use this as a breakout and just wire to the, your, in most cases, SKR Mini, SKR Mini E3 or something like that, I forgot which was the spec. But uh, as I talked about in the previous video, I ordered the PCB4 here, I also talked about it in this video, so I'm not going to go into that, but uh, yeah, the point is, I can wire these to that PCB as a breakout, and uh, yeah, that's the plan for now. And behind this hot glued mess, there is a BME280. BME280 is the little brother of the BME680, so it's this module. It measures temperature and humidity, but doesn't measure uh, Vox. It is one of the few environmental sensors that's supported by Clipper, so that's why I chose it. I could also just use a, like a PT100 or any other thermistor really, it doesn't have to be a PT100. And uh, that would also work, but 
yeah, this also measures humidity, so I don't know, I decided to go with this, even though that's not really necessary. And uh, yeah, this will be an, an interesting data point measuring the chamber temperature and humidity. How useful that's going to be? Well, probably not that useful, but yeah, it doesn't really hurt. At least not that useful on a V0, the my V2 with the Doom Cube, it could be uh, inter uh, more important, but since this machine can't really reach high temperatures anyway, it's just uh, for fun. And uh, here is the relay that I was using for the top hat LED lighting. It's now mounted here, as I showed in the previous video. I uh, have a little uh, bridge under one of these, and that's for the zip tie, and that's how I'm mounting this, because this doesn't have any mounting holes. And uh, yeah, it should still work. I'll redo the wiring and everything. This is the old wiring. And now for the breakout board on the back chamber. You might have noticed it in the last clip if you paid attention, but uh, yeah, it is there. I received it, but I'm going to get a new revision. So uh, what's going on is, uh, well, basically me being an idiot. I ordered it in the last episode. I designed it in the last episode. It was, it all happened in a few hours and uh, yeah, I was uh, kind of drunk there. You probably noticed from my voice there. And uh, yeah, idiot me didn't really think about clearances for mains AC wiring. So a lot of that is passing through the low voltage DC pins right next to them with a very thin trace and basically no clearance other than the standard clearance I put for DC. So uh, yeah, that definitely isn't ideal. So I'm going to get a replacement. I already fixed the problem. It's obvious enough. I mean, this is not something I don't know. I designed PCBs for mains AC wiring before. Yeah, that means it will take a while to arrive again, which means it's not going to be in this video. But uh, yeah, just an update on that. A box from the DHL just arrived and it's from Lector. So this is what I got in there. Par some parts are for the V0, some parts are for the V2. So uh, for example, this is the integrated lead screw V0 motor. I uh, put the anti-backlash nut on it, it shipped with this one. I don't know if it's necessary now or not, but it was recommended back in the day, so uh, yeah, I'm keeping that. And a cable for that, which is ridiculously long for the application, but I don't know, I guess they're including a standard cable there. Two of these motors, these are 0.9 degree stepping angle gantry motors for the V2. So this is for a 0.9 degree stepping angle upgrade on the gantry. If you remember quite a few episodes back in the V2 series, I did something like that, but it didn't really work well with some uh, smaller LDO motors, but apparently these work well. So I'll do that upgrade and stop at some point, but I don't know when exactly, but uh, yeah, it will happen at some point. Got this motor. This is uh, one of the Galileo motors. Obviously, I already have a Galileo. That's not for uh, that. Uh, V2.1, it's announced and public knowledge, so I can say it. Uh, it will feature a direct drive extruder, and this is for that. So, uh, um, I already bought this to have it in stock. Not sure when I'll do that upgrade. It's not even released yet anyway, so I don't have the files. Got four of these uh, rubber feet. These are from Misumi, but uh, yeah, obviously shipped from Nectar, as I said. They feel pretty nice. They look beefier than the stock feet, which is why why I went with these. Because, uh, yeah, the Doom Cube upgrade, when I do that, the printer will be much heavier. So, uh, yeah, these look pretty nice. And kind of look like a Kinder Egg. Now, I guess this video is banned in America. Uh, got some uh, nuts here for the V0 bed. So currently I'm using these which are too tall, which means it limits my Z travel. So these are for that. And got some pretty nice tasting candies, which I'm happy about. So thanks for that. These really taste nice. So uh, yeah, that's all I got from Lector. So uh, stay tuned for the future videos on the V0 and the V2. It will be pretty interesting, hopefully. I now remove the board from here because I needed a test board for my new ZD950. I can make a video about that if you're interested. It's a desoldering gun here. So uh, let me know in the comments if you're want if you interested in that. But uh, yeah, I needed something to test on and that's what I used. So it's gone. 
but I still did a decent amount of tool wiring here. Obviously, it's not managed. That's not what I mean. I just connected things. Management will come later once the PCB is in there, the new one. Mounted the uh, uh, back converter here, and I actually mounted the relay on top instead of zip tying it in place because uh, yeah it was a nice surface here so I thought I should use it and uh, yeah before anyone comments which I'm sure someone will if I don't say this yes I know I can use uh, any heat pad output or anything like that from the duet for controlling lighting I am aware of that in fact I made a video about that but in this case uh, since I already set it up for this uh, back in the day I'm not changing it because, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, so I'll keep it that way. In the front, you'll see the lead screw here. And uh, yeah, if we look here, you can see that I switched to the new uh, motor that just arrived. It's that LDO uh, Voron Zero motor. This will be spec in Voron 2.1. I think that is confirmed, so... Uh, yeah, if you want to get ahead of that, you can buy it. It's available in most of the uh, retails, retailers that sell Voron stuff. And uh, yeah, the this is actually kind of a downgrade in terms of a motor from my previous setup, which is not the stock setup. That was a 0.9 degree stepping angle motor, and this is, I think, 1.8. So uh, there is that, but the reason I did this change is because well, in other cases, I had to have the coupling there, which not only introduces some uh, variance to the print in general, it was also rubbing in the back panel, which, uh, yeah, was a problem, obviously. And, uh, yeah, this is theoretically better as a result, even though the motor itself is a downgrade. So, uh, yeah, we will see, obviously. I'll have to change some of the config stuff uh, for that. And uh, did some wiring here as well, but uh, yeah, I didn't do most of it because I'm still waiting for the new PCB. So uh, that's going to be it for this video. It was a little shorter than I expected, but I actually did as much as I said I was going to do in the previous episode. And um, still, I have to wait for the new PCB that I just ordered a revision for. And uh, uh, it's not even shipped yet, and it will take a while. So. Uh, there's no point in delaying this. I think I should just release this so you know what's going on and uh, Yeah, without a PCB I can't do much more. So uh, that's what I mean So uh, stay tuned for the next episode, but as I said for this episode, that's going to be it So I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a like down below and stay tuned for the next episode That's it. So thanks for watching